Hello everybody in YouTube land and everybody who is watching live on Twitch. Today I am doing an often requested video on our YouTube channel um, that I did previously for Edge of the Earth where I'm going to be rating all of the Dunwich Legacy cards five years later. It came out in 2017, it's technically 2023, but shh, it's not really been six years, but it kind of has been six years. And uh, I'm going to go through, talk about the cards, and then rate them with uh, the knowledge that I have currently with them, because I have played these cards a lot. But a, non a lot of new players are just starting to get these new re-release boxes, so they might want to know exactly what these cards do and how good they are at doing them. Let's look at the tier list. So we have Busted at the top tier. This is for cards that break the game. Yeah, cards that are kind of just like, way too strong for what they do. <laughs> um, notably, I'm gonna be like, um, I mean like way too strong for what they do is putting it lightly, but like cards that like change the game and break the game, like for example, double or nothing when we get to that card is the probably one of the most busted cards to come out in this whole, in this whole game. Uh, fantastic cards are cards that are very, 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 very good. Very efficient, very strong, very powerful. You're always happy to see them. You're going to often include them in your decks, and they're just really good. Great cards are cards that are strong. They're, they're like, they're above good. They're, they're <clears throat> peaking above that level where you, like, look at this card, and you're like, this card's good, and this card, it just, it always does what you want it to. It does it very well, but it doesn't do it to the level that Fantastic does. We then have good. This is where the majority of the cards are going to sit, because the majority of cards in Arkham are good. That's just the reality of the situation. When you have a smaller collection, good is harder to, like, really take advantage of in all cases. But overall, most of the cards in this box are going to be good. Good cards are just, they do their job. They don't do it particularly impressively, but they just get the job done and you're happy when you play them. Fine. Uh, are cards that are below good. They're like, they're fine, and you'll run them, and you'll play them, and there will be times where they are good or great, but most of the time, they're just fine. They're just fine. I regret playing this for cards that I think are what you could call the closest to a bad card. Cards that you kind of are just like, oh no, why, why is this card here? You look at it and you're like, oh no... Um, and this card, there's not going to be many cards that exist in this tier, because, really, um, I mean, there might be, I actually don't know, we'll, we'll go through, there's a lot of cards that I'm kind of looking through and being like, oh yeah, I remember this guy, I haven't played in it forever, because I kind of regret playing it when I did. All of these cards are being talked about without the taboo list in mind, um, because, well, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Uh, so the taboo list is, its if you don't know what it is, it's basically just like modifications to cards to kind of balance them, but to kind of also, you know, give lower cards more chance to shine, which is ultimately balancing. But it's a completely optional way to play, and when you're just starting out, just, just freaking ignore it. So let's go through this, and let's talk about some cards. Blackjack, it's a one cost, hand slot, asset. Commits for a fist, it's an item, weapon, and melee. It's an action you can fight. You get plus one fist for this attack. If you perform this attack against an enemy engaged with another investigator and you fail, you deal no damage. So this card is a weapon that gives you plus one fist but deals no extra damage, which automatically means it's not good. <laughs> Most of the time, when you're looking for a weapon in this game, you are looking for something that deals extra damage. Because if it's not giving you a fist boost, it's probably giving you extra damage. Like, for example, the 32 Colt from the Path to Carcosa. Or it's giving you plus one fist and plus one damage with a little caveat, which is like the machete, which is good. Um, this card, however, is not doing anything that's really good. It gives you plus one fist. Yay. It's allowing you to avoid dealing damage to another player if you miss. But when you hit, you just deal one damage, and that's not good. So this is actually... Uh, I know I said there wasn't going to be a lot of these, but I don't think this card is even fine. I think this card is not good. It is actively uh, a not a good card. So, um, 
I'm going to put the blackjack. It's going to start us off Dunwich with an I regret playing this right off the bat. There is an upgraded version in the return to, I believe. Uh, except return twos are becoming harder and harder to find. <laughs> but there are much better weapons out there for you to take advantage of. Taunt. This is a one cost event. It's a tactic. Commits for a brain and a fist. Fast. Play only during your turn. Engage any number of enemies at your location. So, um... Taunt is fine. It's a fine card. Um, there are times where it shines and it can do really well. But overall, I think that this effect is... Not worth a card in your deck most of the time, right? Um, because it's, it's one of those things where... Realistically, you should be confident enough to deal damage when you attack into an enemy being held by someone else. If you're scared, you might want to ask, why am I scared, right? Like, if it's a, if it's a boss monster that has five fists and I'm only attacking with five, that's a reasonable time to be scared. But if you're attacking, like, a three health ghoul and you're up and you have five and you haven't committed anything, at that point, you have to ask yourself, why am I scared of missing, right? Um, and... Because the reality is, you shouldn't be missing more often. So it's the kind of the things where unless you have engaged synergy, uh, where taunt is going to go up in value, overall it's kind of just fine. Teamwork. Investigate your location may give or trade any number of item assets, ally assets, or resources among one another. So this is what we call a meme card. <laughs> in the biz, this is called a meme card. Where it kind of just... Uh, it's there for the fun and the jokes and the laugh, but I don't think it's on the level of blackjack. I think ultimately uh, teamwork is still just a fine card. It's like, it's not like I regret playing this. You can, if you're playing it, you know you want to play it. It also commits for a wild, so if uh, you don't want to do the memory, you can just kind of, um, you know, have some fun with it, right? Um, it's it's not good by any means. It could, uh, someone could argue it's down in here and I would not try to like argue with them mostly because I have more important things to do with my life, but it's just a fine card. It's not going to be even close to good, but it's fun. It's a fun card. All right. Level two taunt, one cost, two experience, commits for everything, well, almost a while, every, everything but a book. Fast, play only during your turn, engage any number of enemies your location, draw one card for each enemy, engage this way. So this is nice. This is a nice, uh, this is a nice change where you get to draw cards for this action. So you're basically getting two actions out of this card. It's replacing itself. I mean, it's not like actually two actions because you're down a card. Like you're, you don't even like get, you know, you don't get up a card if you're only engaging one. If you're engaging two enemies, this gets really nice. If you ever get to engage like a swarming enemy, if you have Dream Eaters campaign, this gets really good. Um, but I think that, I think it's a good upgrade. Um, I would still probably would likely not play it because this is not my personal play style for Arkham because I'll just like tell you to trust me because I'm going to, I'm going to hit. Um, but it's still fine. Like, if you want to be doing this taunt thing, it gives you cards. It replaces itself. If you ever engage two enemies with it, not only are you getting such action positivity out of it, but you're also getting up on cards out of it, which is, is nice. All right, Laboratory Assistant. This is a two-cost ally. Miskatonic and Science commits for a book. Soaks for one and two. Your maximum hand size is increased by two while checking your hand during the upkeep phase. And after an Ender's Play, you draw two cards. This is a great card. This card is very, very good. Um, it, it gives you up one card because it's replacing itself and then giving you a card. But it's also increasing your maximum hand size. But it's also soaking for you, which is really nice. It's also like dirt cheap. You're basically paying two resources and an action to draw a card because you're replacing the laboratory assistant, getting your hand size increased, and also, like, you know, getting a bunch of soak out of it as well. It's a great card, and uh, you'll play it in decks that don't even have hand size. 
And then, yeah, as Tyler is saying in, in chat, anything under three costs for an ally is usually worth it for Soak alone. I agree with that as well. It's just dirt cheap, and it's it's like a big part of the Seeker ally suite. Strange solution. So, this is the first of the, the this is the first time we saw the researched cards. And I'll tell you what, these were pretty exciting when the first spoiler article came out and we were like, what the hell could this mean? Um, it is nice to not have to wait a few months to get the actual research things when you get the box. So you can start these in your level zero deck and then like, you know, play them <laughs> the next day. Uh, but let's see what Strange Solution done. It's a one cost. Commits for a while. It's item and science. As an action test book for if you succeed, discard Strange Solution and draw two cards. Recording a campaign log that you've identified the solution. So these uh, are all like... This card's rating is honestly higher than it should... It, it, it's it's going to be lower than it should be because it's a necessity for the upgraded cards. But this card is just fine. <laughs> it... uh. <clears throat> It's a necessity that you need to play to get the upgrades out. And I, I don't think it's a good card. I think it's just fine. But we'll get to the upgrades where the real juice of this card lives. Shortcut. Zero cost event. Commits for a brain and a foot. It's an insight and a tactic. Fast. Play only during your turn. Choose an investigator at your location. Move that investigator to a connecting location. This card is fantastic. I definitely think it probably goes down in value uh, when you hit the higher player counts, right? Um, but it's just a great card. It's just, like it's just very, very good. Like you'll notice that I'm saying like great, fantastic, like good over and over and over again. Don't uh, pay attention to the word definition that I have it. Look at the tier list. So replace anytime I say very good, replace that with fantastic. Um, but yeah, at Two players, this card can do a lot of things. It doesn't seem like it can be that efficient, but it is, um, it's very good. It's a very good card. Thanks again for the limited decks you made me. Uh, finally got through the gathering and I fell in love with Safina. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. I'm, I'm happy that and I'm happy you're loving Safina. She was definitely the one I was worried most about in that group. Anyways, to go up with Discard Pack saying it's also about Shortcut, it's always playable. It's always playable because if you don't need it as the clue getter, uh, your goon can use it to, to get into a better position to fight a boss monster. It's just a very versatile card. Seeking Answers. One cost event, Insight, Investigate. If you succeed, instead of discovering a clue at your location, discover a clue at a connecting location. So I'm in between... Uh, I'm I'm sitting between fine and good for this card. Um, I think that it has a lot of potential, and I'm feeling a little bit like kind today, so I'm gonna put this in the good tier. Um, if someone put this in fine, I would agree, but I also would agree if they put it in good. And I'm just like Christmas is just finished. I uh, you know, I I got a. I'm recording some Arkham today. It's a good day. I'm just in a good mood, so I think seeking answers is a good card. Uh, what it can do is it can discover a clue at a location where the shroud is very high. I think that it also can, like, you know, work very well with someone like Rex Murphy, who you get in this box, where if you succeed by two, you also grab a clue from your location, which is nice. Um, I'm kind of, honestly, though, I'm starting the, my, my Grinch heart is shrinking, and I feel like I might put this down in fine, now that I think about it a little bit more. Because, like, what does it really do? nothing right it doesn't really do anything you know what uh i'm i'm mad it's going back down to five <laughs> you know we have the uh, we were we were okay for a second but now i think we're going back to the fine tier i think this card is ultimately just fine I, it was good for a second but now that i talked about it it really doesn't do anything it really doesn't do much <laughs> we're just doing some live rating on the fly here liquid courage uh, Liquid Courage is a one-cost asset. It's an item and illicit. It has four supplies. You can access an action, spend a supply, choose an investigator location to heal one horror, then an investigator test brain two. If the test succeeds, he or she heals one additional horror. If the test fails, he or she discards a card at random from his or her hand. So this healing is a little bit strange, right? It's a little bit strange, especially once we get into 
um, this clarity of mind or whatever it's called over here because this card <clears throat> isn't is like I think that this card is actually like good I don't think I think it's beyond fine I think like if you want healing this is a pretty efficient method of healing because it's um in the right case it's two action it's, it's it's two horror for one action if you're a rogue you just are using this just to heal the horror that's on you but it also only costs one to put out which is noticeably different than two um but like it's just one of those cards that is just we still play it to this day right like mostly just me and Bryn because travis doesn't play green cards but Liquid Courage will end up living in a lot of my decks uh, if if I, I, I want, like, some healing and I have green. It's not bad healing. It's not great healing. Uh, it's just good healing. It's just good. Think on your feet. Fast. Play when an enemy would spawn in your location. This is a one-cost trick, by the way. Immediately move to a connecting location. The enemy still spawns your previous location. I think this card is fine. Um, I have a lot of dreams in my head where this card works very, very, very well. And it really never does. Like, there were times where this think on your feet saved my life. It saved my little freaking tuchus. But most of the time, I play think on your feet and I end up committing it for a book or a foot. So I think overall this card is just fine. There's a lot of situations where you can paint the picture in your head that it would do great, but most of the time, it ends up never doing those situations for you. Which is a down, which is which is a little, a little uh, unfortunate, but what can you do? Double or nothing, it's a fortune. Wild, max one committed per skill test. Double the difficulty of the skill test. If this skill test is successful, resolve the effects of the successful test twice. So... If you're playing this card fairly, it's a it's a great card. If you're trying to, you know, do things that are bad, this card is busted. Um, this is the only card, fun fact, to become forbidden. <clears throat> which means it cannot be played at all if you're playing with the taboo list. Um, and it's it has that honor. I hope one day something else gets forbidden just because... Uh, it can be, you know, um, pretty nice. Uh, I'll be honest. I've never done any of the things that are what makes this card needing to be forbidden. But I know that there are a lot of really spicy things that you can do with it um, that I've heard but did not remember because the card's forbidden. And honestly, I sometimes forget it exists in the game. Um, but you know what? Like, does anyone have any examples in chat? Because, like, even just, like, you know, you commit two deductions, you grab, like, four clues, you grab, you put, like, some nimbles on that, you move six times, you fucking do Eurekas, you get to draw two cards. If you have to get to draw four cards, if you have two Eurekas, oh my god. And that's probably, like, that's even me just being really basic. There's probably, there's even more degenerate stuff I imagine you can do. <clears throat> commit it to anything that is automatically successful and there's no downside 10 damage in one action yeah that all seems pretty spicy doesn't it <laughs> all right hired muscle uh one cost one experience three one you get plus one fist at the end of the upkeep phase you must either pay one resource or discard hired muscle card's just good i don't think it's i think it's above fine like the card is if you want it in this deck like, if you are looking to play cheap allies or you're making money or you want just some cheap soak and some fist booths this guy's good. This guy's very good. He just gets the job done. Right of Seeking. Alright, four costs. Uses three charges. Spend one charge. Investigate. Investigate using brain instead of book. If you succeed, discover additional clue. If a skull, tablet, squid, or skull, cultist, uh, tablet, or squid, or auto fails revealed during this test, you lose all remaining actions and immediately end your turn. Good card. Uh... It would be great if it also gave you the boost with your brain. So we're going to be seeing that up in the future. Um, the thing that really... Um, I, I remember, yeah, in the back in the day, Travis hated this card. Uh, and the lose all your actions sounds spooky. But you also could just, like, use it on your last action. 
It still blows my mind that these were not included in the in the core set and then double again in the revised core. I feel like they could have changed things a bit, I think, for the revised core and just put in, like, you know, all the juice needed. But I do wish they were in the core set from the beginning because I think then the, the Mystic class would have been um, more actualized from the start, which I think is is good. Would have been good. Good card, though. Ritual Candles. After a Skull, Tablet... Sorry, after a Skull, Cultist, Tablet, or Squid is revealed during a test you're performing, you get plus one skill value for this test. Takes up your hand slot, it's an item. One cost to basically get half uh, Unexpected Courage whenever you draw one of these symbols. Um, it asks for very little, and it does a lot. Card is just good. Card's just a good card. Try it out. If you hold two of them, especially because most Mystics don't care about their hand slots, with a smaller collection especially... These are basically just say, hey, when you draw one of the bad symbols, why don't you get plus two on it if you're holding two of them? And it asks for very little. It doesn't even exhaust. It doesn't even exhaust. It's a good card. Clarity of Mind. Uh, two cost, spell slot, spell, uses three charges, spend a charge, heal one horror from an investigator at your location. So now we're going to go back and you might be like, but Justin, why is this worse than uh, Liquid Courage? Because it's basically doing the same thing. Well, let's talk about that. Two resources. So already twice as expensive. Uh, takes up a spell slot, which in Mystic is a much more relevant slot than literally slotless that the Liquid Courage has. Um, if you're an off-class Mystic, it also doesn't really isn't really worth the card slot comes in with three charges so you automatically are getting less charges yes less uses out of your clarity of mind than your liquid courage liquid courage does have the downside where a player can discard a card at random from his or her hand but just like don't do it when you have four cards that you want to play play those cards and then heal clarity of mind is our second i regret playing this card is just even though they seem very similar, like in the Mystic class, this card, your spell slots are much more important for other things. Oh, Bind Monster. I don't even know this card. Three cost, two experience, event. Uh, evade, it's a spell. This evasion uses your brain instead of your foot. If you succeed and the enemy is non elite, evade it and attach Bind Monster to it. When attached enemy would ready, test brain three. If you succeed, attached enemy does not ready. If you fail, discard Bind Monster. Okay, this card's cool. Um, uh, it is unfortunately very expensive, but it can do its job um, at locking down monsters, like locking down enemies. Uh, I think that this is a perfect example of a card that overall is kind of just fine, but it can have situation where it is good or even great, I think. But overall, its cost is really high. Um, yeah. I, but I think I think there are definitely cases where Bind Monster can be can be a good card. But I just think overall, it's not too common. Fire Axe. Fire Axe is a one cost asset. Takes up your hand slot as an action. You fight. If you have no resources in your resource pool, this attack deals plus one damage. As a lightning bolt, during an attack using Fire Axe, spend one resource. You get plus two fists for this attack. Limit three times per attack. So we're gonna be uh, seeing um, Dark Horse coming up next. But this card synergizes very well with Dark Horse. Um, and this card is just a very good uh, weapon for fighting. I don't think it's particularly great. I don't think it's a particularly great card. I think overall it's just good. Um, and especially like you don't really need to be playing Dark Horse to take full advantage of Fire Axe. But you just have to be aware that if you are playing Fire Axe you have less resources than you actually do, or you require more economy if you want to be playing expensive cards. Fire Axe is a card that you can just put in a deck and kill with it, but you're going to need to think about it when it's on the battlefield, or sorry, in, in play. I've been playing some Magic recently, so Battlefield has started to come back into my my nerdy lexicon. But uh, it's it's one of those things where it can still get the job done, even if you're not fully committed to Dark Horse. Pete Sylvester, big man on campus. Three cost, ally slot. One, two, you get plus one foot. After your turn ends, heal one horror from Pete Sylvester. The, <clears throat> this guy, he's good. He's good. He's not great. He's not great. 
Mostly because he is here to just hold a spot for the upgraded version. <laughs> uh, it's still, like, a good card. But only having one horror that he can soak for you is less impactful. Because a lot of effects deal you um, to... If you deal it to horror, right? A lot of effects deal you to horror. Which means that with level 0 Pete, it's coming It's coming to get you. I have to talk about a whole other card before we can talk about Upgraded Pete. What a what a tragedy. But Upgraded Pete is... He's he's going to get upgraded. He's going to get upgraded. And then he's going to be really nice. Bait and Switch. This is a one-cost evade. If you succeed and the enemy is not elite, evade the enemy and move it to a connecting location. This card's... This card's, like, very good in Rita. I think overall, though, the card's just fine, right? It has some stuff going for it, but it's still a slot in your deck that... You know, it, I, uh, evading doesn't solve a problem. It, like, this is obviously better at lower player counts where evading can realistically solve problems. Like in solo, if you're a high foot investigator, this can basically just get rid of a non-hunter enemy. You're just like, see ya. Um, but overall, I think the effect is just fine. Petal Sylvester, the upgraded version. This is a three cost ally, two experience. You get plus one foot and plus one brain. Wow! You know, that's pretty good. But if you also after turn ends, you heal a horror from Pete Sylvester. Still the same text, but now he has three horror. This guy basically says, hey, do you want to never die in the mythos phase? Do you want to, like, not worry about the mythos phase? Dude is absolutely fantastic. The guy is incredible. He gives you relevant stats for the defensive. And he makes it, like, basically means that you don't die to horror effects. Card is incredible. Fantastic card. Kukri. Uh-oh. Two cost. Asset. Item, weapon, melee. It's an action. Fight. You get plus one fist for this attack. If you succeed, you may spend one additional action and to, to deal plus one damage with this attack. It takes up a hand slot. I agree, Tyler. I also, I was going to say the same thing, but then I didn't. But Pete is border on busted, for sure. Kukri is bad. I regret playing this. These might look like they're different, but they're the same. Blackjack and Kukri. Not a great card. Not a great card. Yeah. Just not great. Uh, two cost. Emergency aid. It's an event. It's an insight. And it's a science. Choose an investigator location. Heal two damage to that investigator from an ally asset he or she controls. So this card's not, like, great. But it does heal allies. So that automatically can put it in the fine tier. Right? Because if this heals your beat cop for two damage, that's two more damage that the beat cop can dish out. Uh, and I think that automatically just makes it a little bit better than I regret playing this. I still don't think it's particularly good. It is very expensive. Two resources. Um, two resources and um, a card is, is pretty expensive. You're basically paying like a little bit less, a little bit more than one resource for a heal, like one action for a heal, right? Um not actually the math that makes sense in my head i just don't know how to explain it eloquently but like just the rate that this gives you is not fantastic um and then it's the art is the dude's dead that man is dead just so we all know like that's gonna get infected and he is gonna die nothing can help that but i don't think the card's bad i think it's just fine though i think it's just fine brother xavier five cost you get plus one brain soaks for three and three by the way uh, we do have, we have we, there's two investigators focused on healing. There is, uh, there's Carolyn, who care, Carolyn Fern, who cares about horror. Vincent Lee, who cares about damage. There's, two, there's two investigators that care about healing. Brother Xavier, you get plus one brain. He may be assigned damage and a horror dealt to other investigators at your location. When he is defeated, deal two damage to an enemy or location. So, I think this guy, um, when he was... Like, when this guy, when it was just him, like, when you're playing with just Dunwich, this guy is great. I think overall, though, he is very expensive. I think he is a very good card. But I just don't think, like, five resources up front is a lot. But his effect is very good. He is still a very good ally. But I think that it's, it's not a coincidence that the man has been played less and less at our table. Because just other allies have gotten better for guardians yeah 
All right. I've got a plan. This is a three cost insight tactic. Commits for a book and a fist. Fight. This attack uses book. You deal plus one damage with attack for each clue you have to a maximum of three damage. This is uh, a very... I think that this is a really good seeker design for how they fight. This can deal a lot of damage. This can deal four damage. But the seekers need to be, unfortunately, getting clues, which we, as we all know, is impossible for seekers to do. They'll never get clues. Um, but it is expensive to deal the damage, and you are using your book, which is good because it would be bad, but you don't get any book bonuses, just using your book. But I think that it's just a it's a good seeker card that is really nice at dealing damage. I am hovering between good and great right now because I think the card is closer to great than it is closer to good. But I do think that I am going to still put it in the good tier. Card is good though. Card it's a, it's a nice kill spell. It's very well designed, um, and it it really feels like a seeker. If it, it's like good seeker damage. Pathfinder. Three cost, one experience. Uh, this is a talent. as a lightning bolt. During your turn, if you're not engaged with any enemies, you can exhaust Pathfinder to move to a connecting location. Uh, so, um, this card's pretty close to busted. But I'm going to just put it in fantastic because reasonably... Um, it's going to be there. Because <laughs> uh, I just don't think it falls into the definition of what I started this video as with Busted. But the card is very close. Um, It's just like... Kind of wild. It's just free movement. It's just free movement. People play this at 3 experience, and I think that it's still, like, great at 3 experience. And I think at 1 experience, the card is absolutely fantastic. Amazing card. Contraband. 4 cost event. Uh, it's a supply and it's illicit. Uh, choose an asset controlled by an investigated location. Double the number of ammo or supply tokens on that asset. Hey. It's good. It's expensive. It's expensive, but, like, if you think of this card as basically, like, another version of a gun, you need to find the right time to play it, um, but it's a good card. I don't have much else to say. The card is just, like, when it's good, it's good. When it's great, it's great. When it's fine, it's fine. But overall, that kind of lives in the good tier. If you want to be doubling your ammo, you're going to want to, like, you know... I definitely think this gets better when you get a bigger collection, but I think still, the card is... The card effect is good. It's a good effect. Adaptable. Permanent. One experience. In between each game of a campaign, you may swap up to two level zero cards out of your deck in exchange for an equal number of level zero cards. You must still follow all deck building rules for your investigator. Um, I think that this card would be fun if this was just baked into the game. Where you could switch a level zero card, one level zero card from your deck. I, I think that in blind plays, especially when you're just trying some stuff out with your deck... This should be just something you should consider you have. But if you want to play with the rules that are actually, like, in the game, um, card is great. It's a great card. Yeah. Adaptable is just... It's great. It does its job, and you're gonna... It, it requires some game knowledge to truly take advantage of it. But if you can take advantage of it, the card is... It's just, it's just good. It, it, like, literally asks for nothing. It's one experience, and then you can just swap out zero cards willy-nilly try things out very fun to do with the dunwich investigators because of their deck building requirements uh and yeah just a great card delve too deep one cost event in player order each investigator draws one card from the top of the encounter deck then add delve to the, deep to the victory display victory one um this card gets is is one of the few cards that while while i'm streaming chat gets excited to see and when I say, hey, chat, should we delve this turn? Oh, my God, the engagement. They love it. They love it. Um, obviously, this card is better in Dunwich and Carcosa because the campaigns give less experience, right? However, this is, ba this is really easy VP. Uh, it might seem scary, but when you just learn to do it like when you're about to win, 
it's just free victory points, baby. It's just free victory points. Uh, I think the card is fantastic. And um, I still play it to this day. I, st I still play it to this day. Like, basically, like, these good cards, you're going to see me, like, run commonly. But fantastic and great are cards that I'm still playing to this day. Like, usually at least every run, if not every second run with these with the classes. <sighs> Song of the Dead. Two costs, two experience, takes up the spell slot. It's a spell and a song. Five charges. Spend a charge as an action to fight. You can use his brain instead of fist. You get plus one brain with this attack. If a skull symbol is revealed during this attack, this attack deals plus two damage. This card is probably the card I've ever regretted playing most. Uh, card is not good. The card is actively bad. I think it's worse than Blackjack. <laughs> I think it's worse than Blackjack. I do. Because Blackjack deals damage without spending a charge. This you have to spend a charge to deal one damage with the hope that you'll deal three damage and it just never fucking happens. When you do, it feels good. But, um, it's one of those things that just card is bad, bad, not good. Ezekiel Abaddon says, one note against Del, we often find ourselves just stalling for the mystic to draw it, although it's mostly a problem with ourselves. I, I think, no, I think that that is a, that is a fair thing. Like, you, the true value comes from the fact that you have it, and then if you draw it early, it's kind of a dead card in your hand for the majority of the scenario. And I think that's a very fair point against Del as well. Um, but, uh, I don't know, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think the card, like, the pros of the card still outweigh it, but I think that is a good consideration for Delve. Could be good with a starter deck Mystic, drawing extra tokens. I promise you. Get, get that out of your head. This, the Song of the Dead is evil. It's cursed. It's not worth it. It's, it's not worth it. They should really taboo it to only spend a charge when a skull is revealed. So, it's like, Fight. This attack uses brain instead of fist. You get plus one brain for this attack. If a skull symbol is revealed during this attack, you may exhaust Song of the Dead and spend a charge. If you do, this attack deals plus two damage. There we go! There we go! That's great! When the Ghosty, the song is decent. I took Jim and Nikosi plus some extra token manipulation and it worked nicely. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I've, I've, I don't believe you. You can get two brand. You can get two Brandica Thuggas. Yeah, Brandica Thuggas is yeah. It's Song of the Dead is just it's cursed, and I'll never believe it when someone tells me that it worked for them. I'll never believe it. I'll, I'll be like, congratulations, you are, you are the the two percent of the ninety of the other of the hundred that it worked for. Yeah. Poor Song of the Dead. I think they just even want to just forget about it. Oops, two cost. Uh, we got fortune. Fast, play after you fail a skill test by two or less while attacking an enemy, engage with you, deal this attacking damage to a different enemy at your location. <sighs> so I'm very down on oops, but... To a different... No, no, no. It's still bad. Oops is still bad. You need to have two enemies at your location to really take advantage of it. Upgraded oops? Ain't bad. Ain't bad. Level zero oops? It's still poopy. It's still just a poopy card. Cause so it's after you fail a skill test by two or less while attacking an enemy engaged with you, deal this attack's damage to a different enemy or location. Different enemy. Commits for two fist, which is relevant, but it has to be a different enemy at your location. Um Man, I should play Song of the Dead again, shouldn't I? Should I try Song of the Dead with Nikosi? Should I try this Dice Gods plan? Should I try it? Should I go back and, and live through that? I mean, I have to play Song of the Dead in 2023, right? I have, I have to, don't I? I don't know. I have, I have to play it this year, right? I have to play Song of the Dead this year. So I might as well do it in Jim Sculver, right? I mean, I might as well. All right, we're doing it. Do Swarm count as different enemies? They do. Yeah, so this goes up in value with Swarm cards. Um... Um, I mean, so I'm like 99% sure they do because like it's, because Zoe gets extra resources whenever she engages them. So I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, they do. Um, 
I wonder why they decided on the difference between oops and look what I found, though. I honestly think because of the start of the game, uh, they undervalued the power of clues and they overvalued the uh, on killing enemies. I think they did. I think that was early on. That was kind of the case here. Uh, but oops is just you, it's a lot of hoops to jump through for something that's um, ultimately not great. Like even when you do, you're like. Just run lucky. Just run lucky and turn the miss into a hit. Without having to have another enemy there. Fire extinguisher. This is a 2 cost 1 experience. Uh, takes up a hand slot. Fight, you get plus 1 fist for this attack. Exile it as an action. Evade, you get plus 3 foot for this test. If you're successful, evade each other enemy engaged with you as well. Uh, so exile, this is our first time talking about it. Exile basically removes it from your deck. You're going to need to buy it to put it back in. Ooh, we have a lot of cards to go. Oh my god. <laughs> Um, this is not a great card, is it? I forgot how bad Fire Extinguisher 1 is. This card's not that great, is it? Like, it doesn't give you extra damage. And you have to ex exile it to get the evade. Yeah, like, Knife is better than this, like, most of the times, right? I regret playing this. Card's not great, actually. I don't even think it's fine. I don't even think it's fine, to be honest. Like, the the Evade is nice. Like, the Evade is nice, but I don't think it's worth two resources and one experience and a hand slot. Rest in peace, Survivor. Flare. This is a two. This card's good. This is a two cost one experience tactic that commits for a wild. You either choose one, fight, you get plus three fist for this attack and deal plus two damage. Exile flare. Or search the top nine cards of any investigator's deck for an ally asset and put it into play under your control. Then, comma, exile flare. Shuffle the searched deck. So you only have to exile on the bottom action if you find somebody. The then, comma, rule. But the top action is no, is no slouch. I would always play this for the memes of, you know, getting a flare from someone else's deck. Like getting an ally from someone else's deck. But the top action is really nice. That's just a, a kill spell. That's just a one-use uh, strange solution. Uh, which well, you'll understand more when we get there. <laughs> but um, I think the card... I'm honestly going to say that this card's great. I think flare is a great card. And I'll be honest, Dice Gods, I'm with you. I don't even, I don't even, rem I don't remember Fire Extinguisher One being that bad, but it's a bad card. Holy hell! Flare's great card, very good. Smoking Pipe. I like these cards. I like them. One cost uses three supplies. We're gonna talk also about painkillers at the same time. So Smoking Pipe, three supplies is Lenny Bolt. Spend a supply, exhaust Smoking Pipe, and take one damage, heal one horror. Painkillers is the opposite. Exhaust it, take a horror, heal one damage. I think both of these are good cards. I like them. I like them. If you're playing Pete Sylvester, this is basically just uh, uh, painkillers is free damage healing. Um, if, and then like the damage can go on with the other ones. You also can put this on your allies and like you know get rid of them to heal yourself. I think they're just good cards and they're super cheap. You're not gonna play them all the time. But in the decks that, like, can take advantage of it, I think they're good. I think they're good. I recently, we were playing with uh, patrons, and they were in the um, the Carolyn deck and the Vince deck that Pack made, and they were good. They were good. I was impressed with them. Bandolier. Two cost, takes up the body slot. It's an item. You have one additional hand slot, which can only be used to hold a weapon asset. Card's good. More weapon. Card is good. That's a good card. Um, yeah. There's really not much more to say, right? It just give, If you want to hold multiple weapons, this card is very good at doing with that. If you don't want to do that, you're not going to do it. <laughs> it. There's really not much to say. Stand together. This is a zero cost, three experience spirit. Choose another investigator location. Both of you and that investigator draw two cards and gain two resources. Yo, this card's great. It is expensive experience-wise. It is. We're gonna we're gonna respect that for a second. But uh, 
for like when you're going into the last scenario, you're gonna want to probably upgrade your stance togethers because uh, you don't have much else to do, and you can just get the upgraded version of stand together, and the card is great. It does it's it does very well. It's a great card. Yeah. I like Stand Together Zero a lot, and I like the upgraded version as well. Anytime you uh, you play it, you make someone else very happy as well, and you help smooth out their uh, opening hand or resources as well, or re refill their hand in the late game. Very good card. Art Student. Two cost, Miskatonic. After Art Student enters play, discover one clue at your location. Uh, flashback to what Tyler said earlier. Anything that costs less than three uh, for an ally is really good for their soak. This one has a very positive effect. I don't think this card is great like Laboratory Assistant is, but a free clue is very nice, and I think the card is good. You might be asking, why is one clue not worth, it's like worth less than two cards, a Tesla's clue? And the real answer to that is just that it is. Kind of just how it is, right? Like, most of the time in a Seeker, like, you can just get the clues, and your cards are going to help you get the clues or your playing hand size and laboratory assistant is just going to do more. But that doesn't mean art student's bad. I just think uh, laboratory assistant is just a bit better than art student. Deduction 2. Commits for 2 book. It's practiced and expert. If this skill test is successful while we'll investing in location, discover one additional clue. Uh, two additional clues instead if this succeeds by 2 or more. So in... I haven't played this card in a while, mostly because uh, a lot of my games have been two-player, where Deduction 2 isn't really as valuable, but the card is obviously fantastic in three or four players. Uh, otherwise, it's just great. You put in either of these and I'd be happy, but I'm going to put in Fantastic, because if I don't, Travis is going to uh, give me the lashings, and I do not want the lashings. I'm out of here. Uh, play only, and so it's a trick and a spirit, zero cost event, double foot, for commit. Play only if there's a scenario card with a resign ability in play. Resign. You get the hell out of here. Okay. I'm going to do something that's a little bit wild. And you might agree and you might you might disagree. I think this card is great. It's the like one of the few cards um, that does its job that like in a way that no other card in the game can do it. It also has very relevant symbols to the rogue class, the double foot, in the case that uh, they do not need to resign. It's like never a dead card, ultimately. Um, I think that the card is very good. It's uh, As I said now, it's bordering on great. Um, and I think I'm out of here is just very fun. Especially if you're a Dunwich Investigator, you can just put this in as your fifth card of your five off class. Like if you're playing anyone but Jenny. And, like, uh, I agree with what Stifen and Chad is saying, is the second copy does feel poopy, but um, uh, the second copy does feel kind of poopy, but um, the one of is, is great for this card. All right, we're going to take a little tiny break. I'm going to just stretch my legs. You're not going to miss it on YouTube. Actually, you can just pause the video right now. All right, we have Switchblade 2. This is a one cost, two experience. Item, weapon, mainly illicit. Commits for a fist and a foot. It takes up the hand slot. It's fast. You get plus two fist for the fight action. If you succeed by two or more, this attack deals plus one damage. Card's great. Card's great. In certain investigators, it definitely lives up in Fantastic. But, um... I think that the card is just a really nice upgrade. It gives you the plus two you need to succeed by. For the majority of rogue investigators, um, it for like for like Schizo Tool, you're only attacking at five without any other boost, so it's still hard to succeed by two and get the damage. But then you have like Tony Morgan who attacks at seven with this. It's really good. Leo uh, Leo Anderson also really works well with Switchblade, and I think with them it goes up into the fantastic tier in a way that with other investigators I think it's still good if not great. But uh, I think the card's just great overall. Hypnotic Gaze. This is a three cost spell. Commits for a fist and a foot. Fast, play when an enemy attacks an investigator location. Cancel the attack, then reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If it has a skull, cultist, tablet, squid, or autofail symbol, deal the attacking enemy's damage to itself. I think this card... 
it's expensive. That's, I think, the thing that is making me live between good and fine. Because I, the effect on this card is nice, right? Like a dodge that has a chance to deal damage is a notable, um, notable effect. Notably, it is also damage and not horror. Um, which is one of those things that still kind of just angers me every time that's pointed out. I, it honestly feels like a mistake to me. Um, because, like, it's just so... It's like one of those things where it's just a little bit counterintuitive. Um, I do think that while the effect is nice, I do think that the three cost does put it in fine for me. I think in Parallel Agnes, this card can become actively good, if not great. Um, but I think just the three cost is very expensive for ultimately what is a dodge. That is a chance to deal damage. But I think the card could argue to be good. And I, I, would, I would ultimately be like, yeah... It's like, yeah, it's, it's a chance, but I think overall it's just kind of fine. Shriveling, level three, uses four charges, spend a charge, fight. This attack uses brain instead of fist. You get plus two uh, brain and deal plus one damage to the attack. If a bad symbol is revealed, you take a horror. Card is great. Should have been in the core set. Honestly, I'm shocked. I was shocked when I was getting these together and I was like, this wasn't in the corset, my god! Clutching my pearls? What? Think of the children who want to play Shriveling. Um, card, card's great. Should have been in the corset. Staple kill spell. Very good. Newspaper. You get plus two book while investigating if you have no clues. Once One cost item takes up the hand slot. I think the upgraded newspaper, is that upgraded? No, upgraded newspaper is somewhere else. I think the upgraded newspaper is actively good. I think that this card is fine. I definitely don't think it's in the I Regret playing this tier. Man, you know one thing I'm noticing? One thing I'm noticing is that um, this, compared to Edge of the Earth, there is a lot of early design feels like this. They've gotten a lot better at designing player cards over the uh, history of this game. And I think that Edge of the Earth had like a really nice player card pool. And I think the same is true for Scarlet Keys. And even like Innsmouth and stuff like that. But you can definitely see that there was some design growing pains in this. And I think that this effect is cool, but I think it's ultimately just a fine effect. I don't think it's at the point where I regret playing this because I know the decks I want this in, right? Um, but I think newspaper is kind of just kind of just there. We got lure. Oh, God. One cost, one experience. Attached to your location. During the enemy phase, each enemy that moves uh, does so along the shortest path towards the attached location instead of to where they would normally move. While attached, at the end of the round, discard lure. 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 Honestly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say it. I think the card is good. I think the baseline for what you want out of this card is that it's, um, it basically just is, it costs one experience. It's fine. I think the card's fine. I think, I think I just talked myself down. Um, it's one of those things where like, I think the effect is good and there's going to be times where it is like great. And I think that it, it, it fits into the perfect definition of a card that is ultimately just fine. This card, uh, if it, it costs one experience, which kind of uh, kind of hurts it a little bit. Um, even though in Survivor you don't really need it. But I think the effect, there's times where it can be really good. Um, and But I think ultimately you're... In my mind, the best way to play Arkham is to just kill all the enemies when they show up. Right? You just do your job. You kill your enemies. So I don't even need to play this card. Is like what it comes down to. There's going to be situations where you fall behind on tempo. Or like the enemies get overwhelmed. And you like you draw a bunch of them. Or you're playing in too deep and you're in literal hell. Where this card can do more good. But at the same time. Like why would I just. Why I would should just like I'll play Flare instead. And just kill the enemies. That's like kind of my thought process for it. So I'm generally like lower on cards that are like enemy management that isn't killing them. And that's just me. That's just me, yo. Relic Hunter. It's fantastic. 
Three cost, permanent, you have one additional accessory slot. Great card. Charisma. Three cost, three experience, uh, you have one additional ally slot. Fantastic card. There is not anything else to say. Card is fantastic. You're going to know when you want them. You're not going to just buy them just because they don't take up a slot in your deck. They're always active. Great cards. Absolutely fantastic. Ooh, prepared for the worst. One cost tactic. Search the top nine cards of your deck for a weapon asset and add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. Okay. Let me quickly just check my viewers. All right, Travis is not here. Okay. I think with a small collection, this card is fantastic. I think with a bigger collection, this card is great. I think with the state that the game is currently in, I think Prepared for the Worst is a good card. I don't play Prepared for the Worst much anymore. And it's mostly just because Backpack exists, right? Tim and Jerry, two months of the golden table. Thank you for your continued support. Much appreciated. Thank you for using your Twitch Prime on us. Um, there's nothing worse than whiffing on this. I don't know. I think getting a hit in the head with a bowling ball probably would be worse. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> uh, it's good for stick to the plan. It is good for stick to the plan. Yeah, no, like, I definitely think the card is good. And I, as I was saying earlier, I think with a smaller collection... Uh, it's fantastic then to great once it gets bigger. But then like once you get Tetsuo, once you get backpacks, I think with where it lives in the current state of the game, Prepared for the Worst is a good card, um, but you don't need it as much anymore. I do think that at level 0 still picked up Backpack 0. I can agree with that. I think that's... Uh, I think that's... It's, every Dice Gods is saying the same thing. I still run Backpacks more often just because then i kind of like i now build around items as opposed to just weapons so it kind of works with that but if you're looking for just specifically weapons i agree prepared for the worst into backpack 2 sounds like a very decent upgrade plan card's still good though and as i said with a smaller collection it's um it's very important to be able to get your consistency um, and then when you get a bigger collection too, you're prepared for the worst ultimately also can just be replaced with more weapons. But when you have like the choice between machete, 45 automatic, and then you have trench knife and fucking blackjack. Yeah, you probably want to play prepared for the worst over trench knife or backpack. But if you have a ton of different weapon options, then you can just run more weapons instead. So I think at this point now with the card pool prepared for the worst is starting to get outclassed. Keen Eye. Permanent. Spend two resources, you get plus one book until the end of the phase. Spend two resources, you get plus one fist until the end of the phase. Am I crazy or does, like, no one fucking play this card? Like, I see all the other permanents get played, but this one, like, it's so expensive in a class that, like, really wants, um, really wants resources, right? Um, so... Like, like, I don't think it's in an I regret playing this because you can't accidentally put it into your deck. <laughs> like, it's one of those things that you just spend three experience on and then you just, like, use maybe once or twice. So I'm going to put it in fine. Because I don't think it's down in the I regret playing for this. I think the card is ultimately fine, but I definitely would rather play it over any of these cards. Except for Song of the Dead. I'm playing that soon. It's the only one of the cycle to not get tabooed. That's saying something, isn't it? Preposterous sketches. To yeah, well the mystic mystics are mystics are playing in their own playground. They're having fun. They're like they're you know, they're building like sand castles while, you know, we're at the park. And they're like, where'd you get that sand? And they're like, I summoned it. Preposterous sketches, two cost event, insight. Play only if there's a clue to your location. Draw three cards. Card's good. Draws cards. Um, it's outclassed now, but like if you're playing preposterous sketches, I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna yell at you. I'm gonna be like, cool. Yeah, draw your cards, baby. Do that. It's just good. Don't have much to say. Card just draws cards. Higher education. It's a permanent. Three experience. 
It's a talent. While you have five or more cards in your hand, it gains spend a resource. You get plus two brain and plus two book or plus two book spending the resources. Yo, card's busted. Card is straight busted. I can't believe this card was released in the same cycle that Rex was released. I think it's busted at any XP level at this point. Agreed. It's agreed. It's basically just like, hey, do you want to pass your tests? Because your brain test? Because I'll do it for you, baby! Uh, card's busted. Card's very strong. They had to put something ridiculous in there to deal with the broods. Yeah, no, that is true. That is true. Well, <laughs> that is very true. I agree. I agree. Yeah, card's absolutely wild. Lone Wolf. Limit one per investigator. It's a talent. One cost. Commits for a foot. When your turn begins, if there are no other investigators in your location, gain a resource. Um. You know what? I think this card's great. I think it's a great card. It's a gr I don't play it often anymore, but I've always liked Lone Wolf. It's very easy to make it work. It only needs to trigger once to essentially, like, pay back what the resources put in if it pays twice you're starting to get like closer to action positive if it pays three times you're now actually like action positive um i think the card's just good i think it's like a great i, I think it's even like once again don't listen to the words i'm saying look at where it is and replace all those words i'm saying with that word but i think the card is like it's a great effect it's very easy to trigger and it asks for very little great card Streetwise. Permanent. Spend two resources. You get plus three book. Spend two resources. You get plus three foot. It's an... Oh my... God. I mean, like, I understand Kenai. The idea is that it gives it until the end of the phase. So you spend two resources and you get plus one fist until the end of the phase. So with this one, to get it, you have to spend six resources. But with Kenai, you only have to spend two to get it for all three tests. But it's still just kind of poopy, isn't it? This card, however, is uh, fantastic. I don't think it's busted levels. Just because it requires two resources, and it also doesn't help, um, it also doesn't help with, like, brain, which where rogues really want, um, but I think the card is still fantastic. It's just, it's not to the level where higher education, like, higher education, like, um, shouldn't have like, it's like doesn't even have this text where it says can only be have you five more cards in your hand because as a seeker you're just like always assumed to have five cards in your hand it's just like something like it's like like waters like we breathe oxygen water is wet seekers have five card five or more cards in hand at all times it's just like one of the laws of the universe fantastic card though defiance this is an innate skill. Commits for a wild. Before revealing chaos tokens for this test, choose one of the following symbols. Skull, cultist, tablet, or squid. Ignore the effects of the chosen symbol modifier during this test, including its modifier. And then in flavor text, it just says no. Card is good. Skills are kind of... They live in a different world than events and assets do because of how, like, they are... Because of, like, how they, you know, live and all that. Um, but it's still just, like, a, it's still just a good effect. It's still just a good card. It's a good skill card. Not great, but it, it'll, it'll have a home and it'll do its job. Blood Pact. Permanent. Add one Doom to Blood Pact. You get plus three brain for this skill test. Limit once per test. Lightning Bolt. Add one Doom to Blood Pact. You get plus three fist for this skill test. Limit once per test. Three experience. Do you guys want to hear a funny story? Uh, I mean, maybe it's not funny, but it is funny to me. One of the first decks I built when I got my own collection of this game was a solo Jim Sculver Blood Pack deck. And you know what? It went well. But I probably accidentally mucked up the rules in my favor somehow. But I do like Blood Pack, but I don't think it's particularly... Um, I don't think it's particularly great. I'm going to put it in good. I think, like, it has its moments. In, like, certain scenarios, it can get, become really nice. But I think, overall, you don't really need the plus three brain the majority of the time. Unless you're Jim Sculver. Um, but I think the card is good. I think it's a good card. Rise to the occasion. 
Three wilds, commit only to a test, a skill test you're performing and only if the difficulty of this test is at least two higher than your base skill. Um, I think that this card is fantastic in Kelvin. I think it is nice in, uh, like, Patrice as well. Um, but it, it, and Preston, and Preston, yeah. But overall, I think this card is just fine. Not for me. Scrapper. Three experience, talent, permanent. Spend a resource, you get plus one fist for the skill test. Spend a resource, you get plus one foot for the skill test. Those are nice. Those are nice. But I think that... I think that this one... Like, this one's also just good, right? Like, this one's also just good... Because, like, what do you need the fist for? To bump up your fucking fire extinguisher attack? Because, like, you're... If you're... Like, your fire axe is basically this but better. Right? The foot is nice. The foot is nice. I think the card is just good. I think the card is just good. I don't think it's on the level of these other two. Which are really nice. Yeah, that's a good card. Emergency cash, two. Zero, two experience, supply, gain three resources, and draw one card. Card's great, yo. People should play it more. That's my... Oh, no! I dropped it! Uh, card's great. People should play more. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, this card is is really great. Honestly, for me, it's fantastic. But I think overall, realistically, it's great. Um, I've gone up and up on this card to the point where I just, like, run it, like just because I can, even in my standalone decks, like, it's just everything you want out of an economy card. It replaces itself and drops down three money, if only it was fast, too. Great card. Also very good with backpack. Let's just say it, backpack two, because it can get supplies, right? I'm not just dreaming. Backpack two can get supplies, right? <laughs> get item and supplies? Why do I suddenly doubt it? Okay, good. Thank God. I was like, did I step through a portal and I'm in a world where it only gets items? Man, backpack's a good card. The traitless card. If it bleeds, one cost event commits for a brain and a fist. It's traitless. This card has no home. Fast. Play after you defeat a monster enemy. Each investigate location heals horror equal to the enemy's horror value. Why is this traitless? Like, that, that, like... What should be its trait? Whatever... the Its trait should be whatever this has. Moment of respite. It should be a spirit. Um... Card's not great, though, right? Each investigate location heals horror equal to that enemy's horror value. Yeah, I think this is an I regret playing this. Most like how everyone feels in chat right now who did not know that this card was traitless. Have to play it this year though? You know I'm gonna do it, baby! You know I'm gonna do it. If it bleeds, that's what the fucking challenge run is gonna be once I'm through with it. <laughs> Springfield M1903. Four cost, four experience. Item, weapon, firearm. Uses, three ammo. Double hand slot. Uh, spend an ammo, fight. You get plus three fist and deal plus two damage to the attack. Cannot be used to attack enemies engaged with you. Oh no. Why can't I hit the guy with my gun? All right. Okay, here's the new here's the new version of Springfield M1903. Okay, has an action on it. Uh, it says fight. If this attack is successful, another investigator at your location must engage this enemy. So then you <laughs> hit them with the gun. The enemy stumbles back. Rex catches him and goes, shoot him, shoot him, and then you shoot him right in the head. 
flavor. It's beautiful. This card's bad. Like, this really should have some sort of hit with the bunt, like the, the, whatever, it, the butt of the gun, of the butt of the rifle, right? Like, it should have some sort of something. Don't which is a really roller coaster with the player cards. Yeah, that's something I'm learning, too. Like, remember I said there wasn't going to be a lot in this one? Apparently, I've, I've just blocked them out of my fucking mind. <laughs> Inquiring mind. Commit only to a skill test, only if there's a clue your location. Three wilds. It's an innate. Yo, card's good. I think the card's good. I don't like playing it past scenario two, but I think the card's good. Yeah, card's good. Inquiring mind. Expose weakness. Zero cost, one experience. Commits for a book and a fist fist. That's an insight. Fast. Play during any lightning bolt window. Choose an enemy location and test book X where X is the enemy's fight value. For each point you succeed by, reduce the enemy's fight value by one for the next attack performed against it this phase. So, um, uh, if this video was done before Scarlet Keys came out, I would likely have put this card, um, in the bottom tier. But I do think that with, uh, Exploit Weakness, this card is now fine. Basically, this card now, like, has a home, right? And that home is Daryl Simmons. <laughs> or Minty Fan. Or Minty Fan. But, like, um, it's, um, I think now at this point... Or Vincent Lee, yeah, yeah. Or technically, like, Rex Murphy. Or Rex Murphy, yeah, technically. Um... Or, like, Mandy Thompson can also take it, I think, right? Because she can play of Survivor Events. Right? Mandy can do Survivor Events. Mandy Thompson can take it. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people can take it. Carson Sinclair, maybe? <laughs> I don't even know. What can Carson do? Can Carson take it? He takes everything but Rogue, right? Look at how many people can run this combo. <laughs> he can try to take it, that's for sure. But yeah, like, now there's so many homes for this exposed weakness. Oh, he has to choose one, though. Ah, sorry, Carson. Fuck you, die. Um, uh, but uh, there's so many homes for it now that this actually is a fine card. I don't think it's good, but it has a home, so that puts it in fine. Quick thinking. If this skill is successful, fight two or more. After it resolves, you may immediately take an action as if it was your turn. It does not count towards the number of turns. It's an innate skill. Commits for a wild. Card is fantastic. We really are on the Dunnitz roller coaster, aren't we? Card is played in like pretty much any deck that can run it. If you don't, that's okay, but you better have a reason for it. Card's just really good. Lucky Dice. Or are they? Dot, dot, dot. This is a two-cost item relic. Tool experience takes up the accessory slot. It's exceptional. As a reaction, after you reveal a chaos token, spend two resources, ignore that chaos token, and reveal another one to resolve. If that token has an autofail symbol, remove lucky dice from the game. I think I've seen Brynn play this card like three times, and two of those times they were removed immediately. Ah... <sighs> Okay, chat, hear me out. Hear me out, all right? Bob Jenkins <clears throat> buys a pair of these dice for Jim Culver so Jim can see more skull tokens at the cost of two resources. Is that good? Yes. <clears throat> um, I don't know about this card. Like, can I put... Chad, am I allowed to put an exceptional card in fine? Because I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't even think the card is good. I think the card is just fine. 
<clears throat> it's just not great. It's not on the I regret playing this because like it's just it does something. Curious why two resources for a token redraw is only when is only is okay when two resources for skids extra action is bad. Um, I think because this card is not played in skids. <laughs> That's kind of how I look at it, right? Um, that this is like, this can like help like, this is like, you're going to play this in like a Jenny to take advantage of it. Um, it is very expensive. It's not a good card. It's not a good card. Two resources is a lot. You have to pay two to put it down. Like this card could have been free to put down. It could have been free to put down. It could have been, it could have been zero to put down, right? And then you can, like, uh, you only spend resources when you use it. Like, this costs four resources to use the first time. I also could see it being played in Wendy as just, like, uh, an, uh, an emergency copy of her, uh, her ability if she really wants it. But, yeah, like... This is basically saying that, in theory, two resources is equal to a card, because this is, like, kind of, um... It's kind of like Wendy's ability, so then, in turn, Skid's O'Toole ability is, like, discard a card, gain, two, gain an action, which I would love to see on a Survivor Investigator, by the way. That would be way too strong. That would be way too strong. Yeah. You know what? All this talk, I'm putting this down on the bottom. I think the card is actively bad. I like to see a discard a card for two resources. Boy, that would be really fucking good. I would also like to see that survive. Oh, yeah, that sounds. Lo Give it to me, baby. I love it. <laughs> Let's go. That would be insane. Yeah, I think the card's just bad. I don't think, I think, I even talked, I talked myself out of fine. Isn't that the fast rogue synergy card? The make a deal or whatever it's called? Not make a deal. You got Joey the Rat for the cards for resources at least. Yeah, but I only want it in, I want it in Survivor. I want it in a Survivor Investigator. All right. We got Opportunist. This is a level 2 version. Innate developed. Commits for a wild. Commit only to a skill test you are performing. If you succeed by two or more, return Opportunist to your hand after this test instead of discarding it. Uh, card's good. I don't think it's particularly great. You're going to know when you want to play it. It's great in some investigators. Like, Winifred loves it. Silas is happy to play it. Um, card's just good, though. Card's just good. Not much to say. There's not much to say about skills unless they're broken. Alyssa Graham, she is a speaker to the dead. Four cost, ally Sorcerer Supreme. Now, she's not the Sorcerer Supreme. That's the upgraded version. She commits for an ally slot. You get plus one book. As a lightning bolt, you can exhaust Alyssa Graham to look at the top card of either the encounter deck or any player deck. You may then add one Doom to Alyssa Graham to place the looked at card on the bottom of its deck. Uh, amazing with Gloria, man with most others. I've copied and pasted that homework from Tyler in chat. I agree. Um, I think it's a shame. Like, M Marie Lambeau also can take advantage of her, right? Um, true solo card is Ally can get. Yeah, I agree with that as well. I like Alyssa Graham. I don't think she's bad, though. I think all of her text on her is good. We're just going to put her in the f uh, in the good tier. Because I think that she is just a good ally. She just doesn't see play mostly because she doesn't fit into the... Um, um, it doesn't fit into this mystic class, right? But I think all the text on the card is good. So I think we just have to, like, respect the text as opposed to where she is played. It's like the reverse of the fine tier. She gets good because she is good. Right of Seeking, four. Five cost. Spend one charge. Uh, investigating a plus two brain for this test. Discover two additional clues. Where I put the other one? In good? Yeah, this is a great card. 
Should have been in the core set. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Oh, hey, they printed finger, uh, fingerprint kit four in purple. Yeah, it is. That is true. That is true. Doesn't doesn't exhaust though. Doesn't exhaust though. Also, like mystics don't have other good ways to get. I'm, I'm not getting. I'm not getting baited. You can't. Uh, that's bait. Fucking uh, Tom Hardy in Mad in Mad Max Fury Road. That's bait. That's bait right there. Dark Horse. Hey, this is the one I talked about like an hour ago. Uh, limit one per investigator. It's a three cost condition. During the upkeep phase, you may choose not to gain resources. While you have no resources in your resource pool, you get plus one to all of your stats. Um, card is good. Card is an entire archetype. However, I don't think the archetype is particularly great. This is for coming from someone who once was in love with the archetype. I think overall, though, the card pool has just exceeded uh, what Dark Horse can do. Because it's better to just play events now. Like, going down to zero resources is not worth it anymore. Like, it's, it's just not... It doesn't balance out the stat boost that this gives you. And that's just the reality coming from someone who loved the hell out of Dark Horse. But the effect is still good in the decks that want to play it. Survival Instinct. This is a two cost, innate developed skill, well, two experience, innate developed skill. Commits for a double foot. If this test is successful during an evasion attempt, the evading investigator may immediately evade each other enemy, engage with him or her, and may move to a connecting location. Um, I think the card is good. It has a lot of good text. I don't think it's particularly great, once again, because I hate evading. <laughs> Um, but if I respect it, if I go, if I take my bias and I pull it out of my brain, is the card great? That is a good effect, but I think it's just still just good. I think the effect is still just good. Leadership. Oh, God. This is the level zero version? We don't even get the level two version? Oh my god. Uh, it's a, a practice skill commits for a while. While leadership is committed to a skill test being performed by another invest investigator, leadership gains brain and a wild. It's fine, right? Like, it's fine as a level zero card. It's not going to do anything particularly great. Um, but... The upgraded version is fantastic. Well, maybe not fantastic. It's great. The upgraded version. Well, we'll see when we get to that video. We'll see what I think of when I get to that video in a few months. But um, right now, I think the card... This is still just fine. Like, it's still... Like, it still is a triple guts. Right? Well, like, three brain symbols. Yeah. Just fine, though. I've had worse. This is a zero cost, four experience, spirit event that commits for almost uh, a leadership. <laughs> Fast. Play when you're dealt damage in a horror. Cancel up to five damage in a horror just dealt to you, then gain that many resources. You know, it's such a shame that they started with this big version of the card because it's like the, the level two version I think is quite playable. I think this level four version is not that great it basically i know someone's gonna be like it it gets rid of that it like helps you take less damage from the the scary dunwich kill spell it also can help you with like the final big boss of dunwich but i think it's just so expensive for experience that i'm gonna i'm gonna say it i think this card is an i regret playing this It should have started with the... I think the lower level version would have been really nice in Dunwich. Yeah. Uh, I don't even think the card's fine. Because 4 experience is a lot of experience. A lot. Yeah. Alright, we're at the Strange Solutions. We've done it. I don't know why they were printed this... They printed this version in the Revised Core and not the level 2? What the frick? Am I? <laughs> what the hell? That's crazy. 
Anyway, Strange Solution. One cost, four experience. These had to be researched for you to get them. This one has four supplies, the restorative con concoction. Spend a supply to heal two damage from an investigator at your location. Where's my other healing? So this is only... This is... This is like a four experience emergency aid, kind of. <laughs> like, this card's not good, right? Like, this is bad healing. Am I going crazy? Like, this is only good in, like, Carolyn. So, you know what? I get this. This card is fine with Vincent Lee. Oh, there, yeah. Vin oh, this one's Vincent. Yeah, no, I don't know why I had Carol in my head. Vincent. Yeah, but, like, this is the one where, like, I'm playing Shrewd Analysis because I'm like, I have a, I have a, a chance of hitting the damage one. Let's do that. Um, and if I roll it, it's, like, literal regret. So I'm going to put this in there. I regret playing this. Because it's four experience. Four. Acidic Icker. Here we go. Let's go. Okay. One cost, four experience. It's research, three supplies. Spend a supply. Fight with a base skill of six, and this attack deals plus two damage. I don't think this card is busted. I think it's busted in terms of, like, how it was pushed out. Like, I think, like, it was busted in terms of, like, the design decision to have this happen six is a very high base like i think that if this was five i think it would it would feel a lot less strong than it is and i think it would still be fair at five for the seeker class um i think though i am going to put this in the fantastic tier because i think the card is very good i don't think it's busted though but i think the card is a very fantastic kill spell um Because, like, like, it's one of the, I mean, but I don't view this card as, like, you use it to kill bosses. I look at this card as that you get the three health enemy that shows up, and you basically just positive tempo him in one hit, right? This is like, this is like, um spectral razor kind of thing this isn't here to kill bosses this is here to make it so that your goon can like use their ammo on the boss right um and i think that's why the card's so good i don't like i just think the card is it's a little bit strange in its design where i think where the i've got a plan right down over here is really good seeker damage i think acidic kicker not so much And remember, this is uh, not the taboo. Um, the taboo were this. I'd probably put it down in the good tier if it was the tabooed one. But this one, the three damage is really nice. And then we got the freezing variant. Uh-oh, it's an evade one. Justin's going to hate it. Spend a supply, evade with a base skill of six. Can we talk about... This one has four supplies, notably. Can we talk about the massive disrespect... <laughs> ...that the designers even had for evade here? Like, Acidic Icker deals three damage. Have just a regular fucking evade action. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Like, I think if this was released today, um, it, sh it should have the enemy doesn't ready. Like, because it's a freezing variant, right? It doesn't ready this turn. I think that would be flavorfully really nice. Um, they both do the same job, right? Where, um, it lets your seeker wander off alone, but it just does it a lot worse. Overall, though, I think, I mean, I think the effect is still good. It's still, like, four pretty much auto-successful evades. Uh, sorry, did I put that in fine? I meant to put it in good. I think the effect is still good, though. Um, but... Uh, because it's still, it's just still four evades, Right? But they all pale in comparison to the first one. They have gotten a lot better at, like, doing their research cards, too, I think. 
Hey, Joey the Rat here, looking out for number one. I'm a forecast, ally criminal asset. I take up the ally slot. I soak for three and two, which is a lot. <laughs> As a lightning bolt, you can spend one resource and choose an item asset from your hand and play it paying its cost. Yeah, in this cycle, the research cards like were definitely were eaten up by the customizable space. Definitely. So, this Joey the Rat's not great, right? Like, the upgraded Joey the Rat is a huge, most, like, a very big improvement award. Like, he did a very good job. Um, yeah, because the problem is that he kind of just does nothing, right? Like, he gives you an extra action to play an item, which is not bad. I think he's fine. I think Joey the Rat's fine. But how many, yeah, how many items are you really going to play, right? The, the thing about Upgraded Joey is that he gives you money and creates the loop in which you can play more items, right? Um, but, oh, man, can I also, like, I'm going to just build some hype for Twitch. And because this made me think, and also for YouTube, because this video is going to be out before it, I think. It is, yeah. But... Are you guys ready uh, for an upcoming Edge of the Earth rerun video where uh, Travis uses Henry Wan unironically to great success? Are you guys ready for that? Because just Joey the Rat reminds me of Henry a lot. I'm not saying that this is the Henry wan but this is the Henry wan -assance. Yeah, Joey the Rat's fine. The upgraded version is like, really good, though. Ace in the hole. This is an exceptional, zero cost, three experience, trick, fast play during your turn. You may take an additional three actions this turn. This card's, like, really good, right? I think the only thing keeping it out of Fantastic is that it costs six experience. But the card's great. I recently actually just played this in Thin Dark Matter, and I forgot how good just a whole extra turn is. <laughs> you know? You get, like, a whole turn out of this card. I think what keeps it from Fantastic for me is that it costs three experience, right? Sorry, six experience. Uh, but the card, the effect is great. It's a great card. Moonlight Ritual. Zero cost. Remove all Dune from one card you control. All right. This card is fine. And I think the reality is, is that it's great in myth in Doom decks, but otherwise you're never going to play this. So I think it's like, it lives in like this exposed weakness level where it has a home and that makes it a fine card. Otherwise it's not great. Why the Doom guards come out in Dunwich? Because they had the design. Yeah, for Jim, baby. They had the design and they were like, we want to do this. And then they, like, pulled back. They're like, oh, that was scary. Let's, they really should, I think they really could have. Doom could have been something that they added, like, a card each cycle for as well, I think. Fearless 2. This is an innate developed skill. Two experience. Commits for double brain. If this skill test is successful, heal one horror or two horror instead of it succeeds by two or more. Card is, say it with me, chat, good. <laughs> it's just good. It's not great. It's better than fine. It's just a good skill card. The Jewel of Aureolus. The Jewel of Aureolus. <laughs> uh, that's stupid. Uh, it's a gift from the homunculi, by the way. We love that guy. It's a three cost, three experience item relic. Takes up the accessory slot. It commits for a wild. It's an item and a relic. After a skull, cultist, tablet, squid, or autofill symbols revealed during a skill test your location, exhaust it to draw a card or gain two resources. Notably, you do not need to do this. Uh, notably, this also takes up the accessory slot, which means it competes with our good friend, Holy Rosary. But I think the card is actually... Uh, can you come with me, please? I think the card is actually great. I think that, like, it's... It's still not like a fantastic card, but the card is great. The text is good. Playing with it feels good. The only downside is you lose your Holy Rosary. But like, do we really need a Holy Rosary? Yes. <laughs> it's just so, a Holy Rosary is so efficient. 
Just a good card. I think it's just a good card. Sorry, once again, replace the word what I say with what the tier I put it in, please. A chance encounter. One cost event. Choose an ally asset. Any player's discard pile. Put that asset into play under your control. At the end of the round, if that asset is still in play, discard it. Do we get the up does the upgrade one in Carcosa? Wow, Dunnich really just gave you like the inklings of things, didn't it? Um, I mean, like this card has like nice synergy with stuff like Laboratory Assistant, with Art Student, with Jeremiah Kirby, may he rest in peace. <laughs> um So I think it's gonna be fine because the card doesn't like, I mean, it also works with this guy who we're going to be talking about in a bit. But I think that still just kind of makes it live in the fine territory. It's like a temporary fleeting copy of an ally. I would love it if it shuffled into your deck as well after, right? Because, like, right now the flavor is that you pull Art Student out of the water. She grabs... Yes, yeah, Stifen is exactly saying what I'm about to say. You pull Art Student out of the water... Then you push them in the fucking water once they get the clue and you're like, Thank you! And then they drown. <laughs> like, it like that's why I think it really should have the flavor of shuffling back into your deck. Because you save them, but then they go need to chill for a bit. They're like, man, I almost drowned. I'm going to go sit and maybe drink some hot cocoa. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to save the day. And I think that's where... I think that would make the card actively good. Stroke of luck. Commit to a skill test you're performing. This is an innate fortune. Two experience commits for a wild. After revealing chaos tokens for this test, you may choose to exile stroke of luck. If you do, this test is automatically successful unless an autofail token was revealed. Boo! Boo earns! Boo! Boo! Ha. <sighs> Like, I'm surprised that this card hasn't been tabooed to fit with, um, like, this card's just, like, not, like, it's good, it's good, but, like, this really should cancel the autofail, right? Like, this really should just cancel the autofail. Compare this to untabooed Eucatastrophe, which you have to pay for, but you get your fucking auto, uh, uh, sorry, Elder Sign out of it, right? Either cancel autofill or make it 1 XP. Compare it to analysis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I think the card's still good. <laughs> like, I'm not going to say the card's bad. I've played it recently and it did its job, but like this really should, like my booing was the design choice. Or at least, I mean, it makes sense in the past design to choice, but once you catastrophe hit the, hit the airwaves, uh, this really should have been looked at. Fine clothes, baby. Reduce the difficulty of skill tests you perform during parlay actions by two. Soaks for one and one and takes up the body slot. Uh, so, I think it's good. I, like, my, my heart of hearts wanted me to put it into, um, it's fine. <laughs> that is clever. That is clever. My heart of hearts wanted to put it into great, but I think the card is just, it's just it's a good card. It obviously will excel in parlay heavy, um, campaigns, which on our Discord, uh, our users run a card of the day. So if you want to chat about cards, this was recently one of them, and they listed all the parlays by campaign, and there are some where this is just, like, really good in. Uh, but I think overall, it's just one for one one soak. That's an okay rate. That's an okay rate. Moment of respite. <clears throat> this card exists, and I'm going to have to play it in 2023. Three cost, three experience, spirit. Commits for a double brain. Play only if there are no enemies in your location. Heal three horror and draw one card. I 
I mean, I think just the fact that I've never played this card has to put it down here, right? Like, it also, it also is kind of just <clears throat> fine. Like, I don't know if it's, like, bad. It's not good, right? Like, it's not, like, we can agree it's not good. That's an easy agreement, right? But yeah, I agree. The 3 cost and 3 XP just absolutely kill this card. But I think you're only going to take it... Okay, I'm putting it in fine. Because I think you're only going to take it when you have a lot of trauma... Or when you're going into into Carcosa, right, right. So I think there it has a home. It has a home. It's bad. It's not great, but I think it does something. I don't know, man. Cause we have this here. We have this here. I have this here. Can I put it like? Can I make like a a, a fine point, like a fine and a half? Or like half a fine. Because I feel like this card lives between these two tiers. You know? Because it's like, I think it's better than this stuff. I think it's better than the healing variant. I do. I do think that. Because you don't need to like jump through a hoop to get here. I wish I could, like, uh, do, uh, like, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? I can phone a friend and have Travis, uh, tell me where I should put this one. Because, like, I'm really stuck between them. I think I'm going to put it in the in the bottom tier, right? I think I'm going to put it in the bottom tier just because if I'm comparing it to Emergency Aid, which is a healing card that got up here because it does allies, because I think healing allies is better than healing an investigator. Um, and it's about on par. It's like, I think I said, I think it's a bit better than the healing, the restorative concoction of this, but it, it certainly is not. And I think it's also like better than this, but it's not like, in this level and that's where i'm gonna that's where i'm gonna put it that's where i'm gonna put it vicious blow <laughs> sorry vicious blow two uh, uh it's two experience two fist if it's successful by two or more you deal two damage plus two so you deal three uh yo where's deduction it's it's friends with deduction um yeah vicious blow is great great card Fantastic. Still played to this day. This one also doesn't have the deduction 2 problem where it scales worse with um, less players because some enemies will just still have 4 health, right? Or will still have 3 health and this just kills it. Monster Slayer. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this card exists. I have to play this card in 2023? Did I did that get added to the spreadsheet? Did, was Travis this thing's like set to only assets? It was. It's not on here. Okay, something was wrong. I need to redo this. There's going to be more than a hundred of these. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Travis's list wasn't sent to show me events. I think it was set to just... Yeah, neither Monster Slayer is on here. Would you play this at 3 XP? No... Probably not. And I think that's just because you don't get any bonus, right? 
You played if it boosted your fist. Like, I think the level zero monster slayer. Would you play if it boosted your fist? I would play it if it boosted my fist, yes. Yeah, it needs to it, it needs to boost the fist in some way. Like if this like like compare this to um one two punch level five, right? It's kind of just disgusting. Yo, I regret playing this. Exclusively for the dude that eats melee weapons guy. Yeah, but I'm not like th like the thing is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna live in a world where I want the player cards in this game to be designed to deal with like one enemy in the campaign. The designers have gotten a lot better in making the cards more um is ubiquitous the right word? Where it's kind of just like they can work in multiple situations as opposed to like teching a card for one guy, right? Um and I think the card's just not great. Five experience is a lot. Lightning gun, six cost, five experience, item weapon, firearm, two hand slots. Uh, does, it commits four um, fist and a book, uses three ammo as an action, spend on ammo, fight, you get plus five fist for this attack, this attack deals plus two damage. Yeah, this card's sick. I'm going to call it great. I don't think it's fantastic, but I think it's a great weapon that, like, is uh, fun, flavorful, flavorful, and powerful. <laughs> Plus five fist is such a big number. That's, that's a cool card. It's a fun card. Uh, it's great. Lightning gun, go zap. Lightning gun, go z -z 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 zap. Great card. Absolutely love it. Dr. William T. Mailson. It's crazy that this guy came out in the last pack. Right? Like Guardians, they got 5 XP Monster Slayer. They got 5 XP Lightning Guns. Dr. Mailson shows up and goes, Hello, I'm here. And Dr. Milan Christopher just puts his boot on his face and pushes him into the mud. Anyway, Dr. William T. Mailson working on something big. One cost asset. Soaks for two and two. Hey, do you remember that thing we, we said recent we said in the past? How uh anything that's like less than three are really good for soaking? This guy's really good for soaking. When you draw an encounter card, exhaust Dr. T William T. Mailson and place one of your clues on your location. Cancel the drawing of that card and shuffle it back into the encounter deck, then draw a new card from the top of the encounter deck. His effect is good. His stat line is good. He's good. You know what? I'm actually going to even put him up in great. No, he's good. He's good. Because he, he... His stat, like, his soaking is really good. But his effect is... It does lose you some tempo. But it's, like... Not bad tempo. Because you can easily pick up that clue. But I think, overall, the reality is that most Seekers are okay with the encounter deck at this point. Right? Like, most Seekers, it's like a brain test... A foot test is scary, but that's why, like, you have Dr. William T. Mailson to instead just, like, like, the reality is most of the time, you draw a grasping hands, you look at it, you look at William T. Mailson, and you say, ah, fuck it, if I die, if I fail, William T. Mailson is gonna die. And, like, most of the time, this William T. Mailson ends up being a blank text. The times where he doesn't, he's obviously great, but I think overall, this level zero version... Most of the time, it kind of just lives in this in this space. Um, but I think the card has moments where he is great. Like I said, I almost put him in there. Um, and his... Uh, the whole thing is just... He's still just great soak. But I think overall, the effect is just good. Uh, but the other the new version of him is really nice. Deciphered Reality. This is a four cost, five experience event. Commits for a book, a book, and a brain. Insight. Investigate. The difficulty of the skill test is equal to the highest shroud value among reveal locations in play. If you succeed, discover one clue from each reveal location in play. So, fun fact this card actually gets two clues from your location if you're successful. Because you grab a clue from each reveal location in play, but this is also an investigate action, which means that you also get a clue from your location. 
Wow. If you're Rex and you succeed by two, you get two clues. You get three clues from your location. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I think this card is just good, though. This card is also realistically close to fine. <laughs> I got bad news. I think this card is also realistically close to fine, right? It's funny they consider this on par with Monster Slayer. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the reality is, is that this card, it's Magic Christmas Land, is always, um, so much more, uh, beautiful than its reality is. Uh, which is funny because it's deciphered reality. Because most of the time, you... The loop, the gameplay loop for this game is that you discover clues on your location, then you move to the next one. You discover clues on your location, you move to the next one. Sometimes it splits up, but in most cases, the map isn't fully revealed until, like, the, um... Like, until... <sighs> until the end and then most of the time you've gotten and spent most of the clues there are cases where edge of the earth has big maps carco uh sorry uh um path to carcosa has some big maps that work on there's always cases where deciphered reality works but the truth is is that it's very rarely gonna hit on that most of the time you're just spending four to investigate at like six v six and you're like okay now i gotta commit some stuff to this right ice and death and edge of the earth yeah but then you have to spend uh, five of your seven experience that you probably got on the first scenario to pay for this card. And then you don't get stat boosts. And then you're like, I'm uh, testing uh, five to the game's seven, right? Like, that's the thing, right? That's the, that's the this card. Because, like, it's it's just the Magic Christmas Land. It sounds beautiful, but it, it never works out that way. Chicago Typewriter, 5 cost, 4 experience, item, weapon, firearm, Melissa, takes up both hand slots, and it commits for 2 fists. Uses 4 ammo. Spend 1 ammo to fight as an action. You may spend any number of additional actions when you perform this attack. You get plus 2 fists for this action for this attack for each action being spent, including its action ability. This attack deals plus 2 damage. I think this card's good. I think it's a it's a good weapon. It's expensive, but like it can do some good things. I don't think where did I put lightning gun? In great. I think this card is also equally a great weapon. It's a big gun, and you're gonna want to you know like fill it with some stuff, right? Um, but I think like it's still just a, a good gun that does its job, right? It just does its job. The Gold Pocket Watch. Two cost, four experience, exceptional, so it actually costs eight. Commits for a brain in a wild, takes up the accessory slot, it's an item and a relic. As a lightning bolt, when the phase begins, remove the Gold Pocket Watch from the game, skip this phase. After a player phase ends as a lightning bolt, you can remove it from the game to repeat this phase. I still think that this is the most exceptional feeling card that they have designed that doesn't feel... Um, that feels elegant and also feels uh, not needlessly overpowered. This is a beautiful card. It's absolutely fantastic. It goes up in value. It goes down in value a bit when you have fewer player ca uh, cards count. But if like at three or four players, this card is basically like, hey, I'm going to play three copies of Ace in the Hole. Sorry, or four copies of Ace in the Hole, depending on the number of players. Absolutely fantastic card, and it's always fun to make the joke, uh, repeat the mythos phase. <laughs> it's it's funny. You'll laugh. Trust me. Do it, you'll laugh. Everyone will laugh. And you'll be like, ah, ha, 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 ha. Shriveling five. So it's uh, three cost, five experience, four charges, spend a charge, fight. You get plus three brain and deal plus two damage. If uh, one of the bad symbols is revealed during this one, you take two horror. Skip the investigator phase. That one also always lands as well. <laughs> so where do I have the level 2 version? I have that in great. I have this one there. <sighs> Honestly, it is good. But I think the level 3 version is better than the level 5 version. In my mind. So I'm not even going to think about it too hard. I'm just going to follow my, my gut. 
and I'm putting the level 5 in good. The 2 horror that this card can deal you is bad, right? Like, that's, that's a... I don't think that's worth the extra damage. It can be worth it if you are the only if you're the only damage dealer. Like if you're playing two player and you're the mystic and you're dealing damage, it's probably worth it to go to the top charisma just for that plus three. But I would still keep one level three charisma because then you can sorry uh, shrimp. Did I say charisma? What the fuck? I've been talking too much. But a level three shriveling because then it kind of like you can balance out depending on who you want to shoot, right? Um, but I think if you're playing in three players, you can just live with the level three version and be happy with it. Because the level, the two horror on the symbol is not nothing. It's, it's, that is an actual amount of horror. Ward five. So Ward of Protection, it's a one cost, five experience spell spirit, commits for a brain and a wild. Cancel, uh, sorry, fast, play when you draw a non-weakness, uh, encounter card. Cancel all that card's effects and discard it, then take one horror. This kills enemies. Card is obviously, uh, great. Hey, Monster Slayer, you wish, right? You wish. Oh, I have to make a test to kill an enemy that I drew? I already killed the enemy. Uh, what keeps out of Fantastic for me is that it's only for one player and it costs five experience. That's the reality. Good card, though. Great card. Great. We're almost done. Oh, no. Aquina? Okay. 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 Aquina, the Forgotten Daughter. Four cost, three experience. Ally slot soaks for one and four. When enemy attacks you as a reaction, you can exhaust her and deal one horror to her. Deal the enemy's damage to any enemy at your location instead. You will take uh, you will take the horror dealt by the attack. And level three Aquina ain't bad. No, she ain't bad, but she's certainly, like, not great. I played her very recently in Diana. Sorry, Daniela. Daniela. I played her very recently in Daniela. And even then, I'll be honest, my guard dogs were better than her. Like, the guard dogs were just more consistent. And, like, they just were better. It was, like, one of those things where I finally got my Aquinas out. And I was, like, I spent so many scenarios trying to do it. And then I was, like, um, I was, like, okay, now what? Um, I, I think though, she still soaks for four. She still soaks for four. She costs four though. She costs four and like ultimately doesn't impact your game plan that much. Um, I think I'm going to put her in fine as much as I want to put her in good. Um, so I'm going to put her in fine. She ain't bad, though. I'll agree with that. She ain't bad, but I don't think she's particularly good. Which is a shame, because I really wanted her to work. We gotta try and try again. Also, like, with Aquina, you can get that moment where, like, the enemies just deal horror, and you're looking at Aquina, then she looks at you like this, and you're like this, and then she's like this, and then you're like this, and you're like, what the frick? What the frick? Try and try again. Two costs, three experience. After a skill test has failed, if a skill card you own has committed to that test, you can exhaust try and try again to return that skill card to your hand. I don't think this card is that good. I've only played it once and I regretted it. I'm going to be playing it again in 2023, mind you. But... Because <clears throat> um, I think the reality is, is that there's a cheaper version that just outclasses this card. And... those horror only enemies you run if it bleeds is if it bleeds oh we could do that in daniela maybe we'll do that for my daniela deck for the when i have to play aquanaut and if it bleeds that could be fun let's do that that could be fun uh, anyways but this card is like the reality is is that you don't really want to fail like when you're committing cards to a test you are planning to pass that test right sometimes you draw the token that makes you fail but most of the times, if you're committing a card to a test, you're like, I'm committing this to beat the minus four. Most of the time. Sometimes it's like a rotting remains to take less horror, right? But most of the time when you're committing a skill card to a test, the idea is I'm using this to get over the threshold that'll cause me to fail. 
Which means that if you draw the auto fail, that sucks. But it's not worth three experience to bring that card back to your hand. I think that the other one that has the limited number of tries is honestly actually better. Because how many times are you going to need to return a card to your hand to take advantage of it? The Red Glove Man. <clears throat> Two cost, five experience. He was never there. Ally and Conspirator. Soaks for four and four. And he's fast. After he enters play, choose two of your skills. While he's in play, set the base value of each of those skills to six. At the end of the Mythos phase, discard the Red Glove Man. I think he is a great ally. You're not going to want to play him all the time, but when you do, um, uh, it's just good. Like, he's a very good effect. He soaks for you like crazy. He was very good in the Amanda deck that I played that was built around recurring him. Well, by recurring, I mean you're like shuffling through your deck and going and drawing them <laughs> again and again and again. Um, but yeah, he's great. I still reminisce about the Preston deck I made that ran pros, that read the Red Glove Man and Ace in the Hole to take a bunch of actions with the Red Glove Man. That's that was I should I should actually revisit that deck. I should revisit that deck for sure. So can you also loop Unrelenting with Try and Try again? If you fail, yeah. If you fail the test. But I mean, I, I, I think that the reality is it's probably just better to let Amanda and Silas do the Unrelenting things and just like do the good things that your character can do rather than try to make un Unrelenting work like it can in Silas and Amanda. And I agree with you, Dice Gods. It seems like auto-fail defense, but other cards just do it better. Hidden Run with the Red Glove Man also does seem pretty sick. I think, I think the Red Glove Man is a great ally, and there's a lot of fun things you can do with him. He's a really cool card. All right. That's it. It's over. We have all the cards. Two busted cards. A bunch of fantastic cards, as you can see here. I think these are all very nice cards. A bunch of great cards. And once again, as well, this can all also differ from different people. Like, they might jump... Like, some people, like Travis, might be like, I hate green cards. Put this in into good. <laughs> but um, I think that it's really just comes down to personal preferences. as you play the game. This is just my thoughts on it. There's a lot of different um, points of view on this game, which is what makes it so good. I have a bunch of good cards here, speaking of good. A good chunk of them here are good. We have a Dark Horse hiding beneath me there. We have a, a lot of fine cards and a good chunk of I Regret playing these cards as well. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, there will be a link to this uh, tier list, which you can find down in the description. And then otherwise, that's it. I will be doing this for all the other cycles as well. We're doing this for Carcosa, Forgotten Age, and Circle Undone. Dream Eaters and Smith as they come, as well as also looking at the cards from new expansions as they come out a year later. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, and as always, a GG's.